and stretch. Last set, kick two, three, and pull, and kick two, three, and stretch. Next one is called the swan dive. You want to make sure again that your legs are glued together and your buttocks are tight and you only lift up as far as you can without losing that alignment. If you drop, you're going too far up. So better to just lift up this far and really hold very tight in your lower body because the purpose of this exercise is to increase the flexibility in your spine, tighten your hips and your hamstrings very extensively and develop strong coordination. So once you've lifted, you're going to lift the legs as your body comes down. You extend your arms out, and then you're going to come back up. The only challenge is that you're going to do this quite fast. There's no slow motion in this one. So you fall, and you lift. As you drop down, keep those legs tight together so they're held, and your whole lower body is gripping strongly. Once you're finished, Stretch your lower back out by sitting back into your heels. Drop your forehead to the floor and rest. Next one is called neck pull. The function of this one is to strengthen your powerhouse and again articulate your spine. You want to place your legs hip width apart with your toes pulled up. Then pressing your waist into the mat, you're going to roll up through your spine, pull your head to your knees, Sit up as tall as you can, and then roll down through your spine one vertebra at a time. If this is too hard for you, bring your hands forward and have them help you articulate your way up. Make sure you hit that point where you're very tall, and then roll back down. If you can do this with your hands behind your head, the easiest version is using the elbows to help pull you up and then keeping them forward to help your spine roll. But the most challenging and effective one is with the elbows wide, because then you really work your stomach very strongly and you challenge the control of your whole torso. Next exercise is called spine twist. You want to sit up as tall as you can. If it's hard for you to hold a lifted spine with your legs straight, you can slightly bend your knees. The function of this one is to stretch and twist and develop the articulation of your spine. Now, as you do this exercise, it's very tempting to have the hips go. And you can tell that you're doing this if your feet move as you're doing the exercise. So imagine you have a ribbon tied right around your ankles and they're glued together, they can't move, and all you can do is twist in your upper body and then you'll really get the stretch across your ribs and into your shoulders, at the same time working your stomach muscles to help increase the range of motion. Next exercise is called leg swings forward and back. To line up for this next series, you wanna make sure that your elbow, your shoulder and your hips are lined up in a straight line and your legs on a slight diagonal in front of you. Place the other hand in front of your chest so that supports you so you don't fall forward or back. Once you're in this position, you wanna tighten your buttocks and pull your stomach muscles in. Then you lift your leg hip height and you start swinging it forward and back like a long, loose pendulum. The thing to watch for is that you don't let your body rock forward and back. You want to keep it very steady and quiet and the leg long and loose. The other thing you need to watch out for is that as the leg goes to the back, you tighten your buttocks so the leg does not swing out of the socket and you don't end up with some kind of a floppy motion in order to get more range of movement in the leg. So quiet body and long, loose leg. Easy, flowy, extended movement. After you finish that one, the next one is called Little Beats. It's supposed to work your inner thigh and develop length in the leg. So you want to lift the leg up, turn it slightly out, and keeping your foot partially flexed, you're going to press your heel down in front and then your heel down behind. So you're like beating the front and the back of your leg. 
The important thing, though, is that you move very fast. So you also develop speed and lightness in the leg as you do this. At the same time, make sure that you're keeping your buttocks tight and holding the center of your body. Then this one sets you up for the side kicks, where you lift your leg up to the side, flex your foot, and as the leg comes down, squeeze your buttocks tight and pull the leg out of the socket. So you point the leg, loosen long up, and then extend it out with control. So you get a swing and a contraction, and a swing and a contraction. Imagine that someone is pulling your leg way, way, way far from you. So your leg can extend five feet beyond where your foot actually ends. And that will help give you the idea of how long and extended you want the sensation in your leg to be. Next one is called little circles. Again, take this leg, stretch it out, turn the knee slightly out, and you're going to do small circles on top of the bottom leg. Now, check that your circle is half in front and half behind. So it's actually a half circle right on top of the other leg. At the same time, keep your buttocks nice and tight and hold your body as quiet as you can. And this, again, will tighten and firm your hips and lean out your leg muscles. So after you've done 10 in one direction, you do 10 in the other with an accent going back this time, two and three and four and five and six, seven, eight, nine and 10. Next one is called big circles. And on this one, you want to bring the leg in front of you, keeping your buttocks tight, take it up to the ceiling and then squeeze those hips as the leg goes long and far behind you. Imagine that someone is grabbing your foot and stretching it out, pulling the leg out of the hip. At the same time, you want to keep your stomach in and tight and your buttocks strong. So your whole pelvis is involved with this movement. And you feel the range of the leg as it's circling through. You're going to do five in one direction, and then you repeat it but five in the other. So squeeze that bottom as you take the leg behind you and then hold your stomach in as the leg comes to the front. So you're going to go back and up and contract the buttocks to the front. Back and up and pull the leg. Two more times. And the last one in this series is called the bicycle. You bring the leg in front of you Bend your foot towards your buttock. Keep that knee tightly squeezed as the leg comes down so your knee is opposite the other knee. Take the thigh behind you so you stretch it out and then extend the leg out long and straight. The trick on this one is that everything stays hip height and you don't allow your knee to lift up and away. You keep it low and pulled out of the hip. So the whole time, imagine that there's a wall right above your hip, and you can't knock that wall out. You have to keep right along the side of it. You'll do five in one direction. And after you've completed the five, you'll reverse it. As you go to the back, again, keep your buttocks tight. Don't let yourself fall off of your alignment so your body is long and held strongly. And then you stretch your quad as you bring the leg in and through. So five in this direction. Again, watch that the knee is staying parallel to the floor. And when you're finished with this set, you get to stretch the leg out. By pulling it in, grab your ankle with your hand, check that your knee is not up but down, and then pull the leg away from you so you feel a lovely stretch along the front of your thigh. Just hold it for a minute, then bring the leg through, hug that thigh right up to your chest, and then extend the leg as far as it'll go. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go very far, you can let the leg come out a little bit, but just get that stretch so every time your muscles will get a little bit longer. And then you're finished with this set to one side. We're going to repeat the whole sequence again to the other side, and all the pointers that I covered in the last side apply here too.
So you're gonna lift your leg hip height and 10 swings forward and back. Forward, forward, and long to the back. Two, two, and long to the back. Three, three, and long to the back. Make sure your body is nice and steady as you do this so you don't allow yourself to swing at all and keep your hips steady and strong. Three to go, forward, forward, back, back. Forward, forward, back, back, and last one, and back, back. Next one is little beats, forward and back. So you're going to dig that heel down in front and back of your thigh to work your inner thigh. And then side kicks to the ceiling. You swing your leg up and flex it down, squeezing your bottom. Extend the leg up and pull. Swing it up and pull. Four and pull. Five and pull. Every time you extend the leg even further than it was before. Seven and eight. Pull and nine. Pull and 10. Stretch your leg out for little circles. The accent is front. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. To the back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Bigger circles forward up and long behind you. Forward and up and squeeze your bottom so it stays steady. Forward and up and three. Forward and up and four and forward and up and five. Now you'll reverse it, keep those hips tight. So you're gonna lift it and squeeze your buttocks to the front. And lift it and pull your stomach up as it comes forward. And three, and pull. And four, and pull. And here's your last one, and five, and pull, and together. Bicycling forward, bend, squeeze the knee, stretch your thigh, and pull. And forward, Bend, press the thigh away from you, and two. Forward, bend, press it through, and three. Forward, bend, press it through, and four. And last one, long, loose leg, and press, and five. Now you're gonna reverse it. Check again that the hips are strong, your stomach is in, take the leg behind you, bend it tightly into your buttock, and extend it out. And two. And extend. And three. And extend. And four. And extend. And last one, five. And extend. Then to stretch your muscles out, grab your foot, bring it in towards your buttocks first of all, and stretch your quad a little bit away from you. Then extend the foot slightly further out for a deeper stretch. Bring your thigh in, hug it right up towards your shoulder, keep it as close to your body as you can and stretch the leg out. If you need to, you can let the leg come a little bit further away from you and then bring your legs back together. Next exercise is called Little Beats. It's for your buttocks and for your hips. You're gonna do three sets of 10 and you'll lift your legs higher every time you've completed a set of 10. So you tighten these muscles even more. Lying on your stomach, you want to make sure that the legs are together, your buttocks are squeezed and the legs are extended. Then place your forehead on the floor, lift your legs in the air and beat 10 times. Then lift your legs higher, beat again. Lift even higher and beat again. Next exercise is called the teaser. It's very definitely to strengthen your powerhouse and develop balance, flexibility, and control. The simplest version of this is if you actually take your feet and you place them against the wall at about a 45 degree angle so they're supported. If you can do this in the air, that's even better. Then you're going to lift your body up and come back down. 
So it's all about using your powerhouse to get you to come up and come down. If it's too hard and you've got your legs against the wall, you can keep your knees bent and gradually get to a point where you can stay independent as you do this. After you've done five of these, you want to try the more advanced version. And this one you can either do or you can't do. There's no in between. And for this one, you're going to swing your arms up and your legs up at the same time, attempt to touch your feet, then open out into a V and roll yourself down with control. So the upward movement is fast, then you open out and hold for a minute, and then you roll down. And lift, reach, and down. And lift, reach, make sure you're rolling down slowly so you use your stomach, and lift, and reach, and roll down, and rest. Next exercise is called jackknife. It's for coordination, balance, and strength in the hips. Lying down, you're gonna swing your legs up in the air. Very important to get your buttocks up and squeeze them tight. And then keeping your legs glued together, you roll your hips down, take your legs out. You need a momentum to get yourself up there. And then squeeze those hips to come down. And two. Push that buttocks up and roll down. Three. Two more times, rolling up and roll down. Four, even if you just get up a little bit, that's perfectly fine. Five, keep your buttocks tight, see if you can lower your legs all the way down and rest. Next exercise is called can-can. It's to slim out your hips and strengthen and lean out your waist. You're gonna drop your knees to one side, the other th side, the other side and then kick those legs up. So you're gonna go one, two, three, and flick that skirt away, just like they used to do. Three, up, down, kick, 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 up, down, and rest. Next exercise is called the Little Mermaid. You want to drop your knees down, stretch this arm up, and pull over to the side so you feel a lovely stretch along the left side of your ribs if you're stretching your left arm over your head. Then you're gonna curl down and further stretch your ribs out, come back up and swing these arms out, shifting the hands and stretch the other ribs out away from your legs. As you do this, if it's a little too tight, you can open your knees a bit further to modify the stretch. What you're looking to get is an openness in the ribs, as though you're stretching them out like an accordion. And over and up. Once you've done one side, roll your knees to the other side. Again, remember, you can open them out or keep them tighter depending upon your range of movement and flexibility. And again, stretch this arm up as far as you can so the ribs open out as much as possible. Then curl and stretch the whole back of your shoulders out. Stretch out and opposition arm to do the reverse movement. As you curl down, pull your stomach muscles in to stretch out your lower back. And over. And last one, stretch out. Get this hand as close to your ear as you can. Pull it even further over. And then stretch the ribs in the opposite direction. This should feel quite wonderful. Next exercise is called leg pull front. It's to strengthen and stabilize the hips. You want to have your hands a little bit behind you and get these hips as high up as you can by squeezing your buttocks and pressing them up. You're striving to have a straight line from your shoulders all the way down to your heels. It's possible that your hips will drop slightly, but you want to work to keep lifting them up and get better at that. If this is really hard for you, you can bend your knees and again, press these hips up as far as you can get them to go. Once you've got the position you want to be in, keep them up and lift one leg up and down, at the same time focusing on not letting those hips drop. You want to keep squeezing your buttocks strongly to keep them up as far as they will go. One more time, keep pressing them up, other leg and up and then rest. 
Next one will be leg pull back. You get into a push-up position. Check that your shoulders are right over your hands and then squeeze your hips. You want to be in a straight line all the way from your heels to your shoulders. Then you bring your heels forward and back and see if you can keep your body very quiet as you do it so you feel like a steel rod and only your feet are moving. Then you're going to do push-ups. If they are hard for you, bend your knees down and just bend the elbows so you start to build up some upper body strength. If you can though, hold your body strong and again, repeat the movement without letting your body bob in any way. Once you've done your set, rest. The next exercise is called the seal. It's for coordination, increased flexibility of the spine and for pleasure.